Hello, welcome to Seeking Heaven, the near-death experience and other phenomena. I am your host, six-time near-death experiencer, as well as evidential medium and Christ Chandler, Tamara Calder Richardson. If you haven't subscribed, please subscribe, like, make comments, and watch my episodes. These are completely free. However, we do take donations if you are interested in supporting this channel. It is greatly appreciated whether you just participate or donate or both. So thank you for watching today. And we have a lovely person. Oh my gosh, you're just going to, uh, it's just going to be such a blessing for everyone watching today. We have uh, just an incredible person that I have gotten to know because which we keep going back and forth with setting up interviews and then we keep talking. So I've actually gotten to know this person and they're just a, just a remarkable person. Our guest today is a near-death experiencer and it's John Davis. Now it was 35 years ago that he had his near-death experience and he was around 21 years old. But like most near-death experiencers, it never leaves you. It's a very vivid memory, like mine, even in childhood. They're very vivid. And he was going in for surgery, and he can tell us about this, but he had a reaction to the, um, uh, it was an allergic reaction to the anesthesia. And from there, he, take, he, goes, he goes to the other side, which sounds like heaven to me, and then he goes on a tour of heaven. And it's just fascinating. It's one of the most detailed uh, accounts that I've heard. And the fact he's so brave to reveal this to everyone, God bless him. So he is such a delight. Let me introduce our guest today, John Davis. John, hey, thank you for hey being Tamara. Here. It is so good to see you. How are you doing? I'm doing good. Thank you for being here. Oh, it's I my pleasure. Thank you for inviting me. Oh yeah, you are just such a joy, and and I just can't wait to see how this is going to unfold. And you yeah. know that experience is living within us still. Yep. Just like it was the other day. It's not like a normal memory, and it's hard for people to understand. But it's almost ingrained in your soul. Yeah, it's like it's it's almost like it's branded into your brain. You don't forget. Yeah, like it, it is, and it's not just recalling like A B C D but there's emotion tied to it as well. Uh, but what yeah. I find was interesting with you, you're just a regular guy. You've got two teenage boys, you're married, yep. you, you know, a dog and a cat, you live in Colorado, you're just a regular yep. guy. But the fact you have so much wisdom of what you've learned, it's gonna really help so many other people uh, realize that they're spiritual beings too. Uh, maybe talk to, uh, tell us about what you were like right before. I know you were 21, so you're yeah. young. Kid. So yeah. you were just a regular guy. Like what happened before? Yeah. What was the surgery that you were going to have too? I I had an accident where I was riding a moped or a scooter, and I I crashed into a tree. I took a turn too fast, and I crashed into a tree, and I landed on my right hand. And I landed in such a way that I that I ripped off tendons that were attached to my fingers. Oh my god! So I had to go I had to go to the hospital to have them reattached. So when I'm in the hospital, I had never had a surgery before. I never even had a broken bone before. It was the first time I'd ever been into an operating room. So when I when I was in the operating room, just like you said, when they started to give me the anesthesia, I had an allergic reaction to it. And it actually, it stopped my heart and I was dead for seven minutes. Well, I said that seven minutes sounds like it was more like seven years. You, you know what? <laughs> I have told people it, it felt like I was over there for an hour when I was only there for seven minutes, but they showed me so much. And I, I walked away with such an extraordinary experience that I've been sharing it ever since then. And now that we have social media, I've been able to share it with more people like your show, for example. Mm -hmm. I can share it with your listeners. And mm -hmm. hopefully, like you said, help people to, if anything, my mission really is to help people not be afraid of dying. Mm -hmm. So yeah. many people are scared to die. They don't know what happens. And it's such a natural thing. It's like stepping out of an old car or taking off your coat. It's just that simple. Wow. But wow. what it was like before, I I was 21 when I had the accident. 
and I had always believed in God because we were raised Catholic. But as I got older, I never really believed in so much of the dogma aspect of it. I'd always believed in Jesus, and I always believed in we were supposed to do what he did, live our lives like Jesus lived his life with compassion and love and caring and concern for other people. But in terms of what I was going to do with my life, I had absolutely no clue when I was 21. I had no idea what who to does? do. I mean, who does at 21, yeah. really? Yeah. I, yeah. Didn't even, I didn't even go to college until I was 30. I just had no idea what to do. Right. Well, you know, yeah. we're not on a timeline. That's good news for people that that have, you know, young kids are like, what do I do? I mean, sometimes it takes a while to figure out what you want to do. Oh, absolutely. So, yeah. So, a lot. Go ahead. I was going to say, I think people are so lucky. The ones, well, like you, for example, who get to actually do something that they really love doing. Right. So many people just have to go to their jobs just because they have bills to pay, not really doing something that they love. So they have to find what they love to do outside of work or on the weekends. And I, I kind of landed in a spot where I can do this and share with people. And it's something that over time has just become my passion because of what people have told me. They said, your story has just taken away all fear of death and leaves them with just a feeling of hope that those who lost or though they those who crossed over before them will be there when they get back oh definitely and they'll look good too because you <laughs> the yeah. younger the, and, and we'll, we're, we don't have to worry about the gym or botox or working out when exactly. we when we cross over you know it's interesting i've been um uh you know our truth seekers that are watching here um i've been encouraging john to speak out not to embarrass him, but to speak out because Jesus has been telling me um, that he has even more of a message. So we'll have to uh, continue to watch John, but I want to validate something you didn't realize that what you told me just now was actually a message I've been asking about. I said, boy, I've been working 80, 83 hours, but oh. I really love this. Pa I'm passionate about it. And, and I'm like, you know, and I'm yeah. really into it. And, and then you were like, and then the fact you said, you're in a position where you can do that now. And, yep. and I was like, that was such a blessing to so, see. So you didn't even know that. See, and that was an yeah. answer yeah, that, that you gave me. You didn't even know. See, when you don't, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. And God uses all of us like an instrument. If we just, if we just, you know, let him and That's it's just true. that simple. So, um, so you were raised Catholic, um, but you weren't necessarily very, uh, religious you just yeah I, I never the whole part about religion really confused me because i remember i remember <laughs> when we, we would go to church all the time my my dad was a big time catholic and he and he still is mm -hmm. we would go to church a couple of times a week and would also go on sunday so for a little kid like my sister and i we were like little and we it, it seemed like we were going every single day and I remember them talking about the fear of God and talking about hell. And I just, I somehow I knew, why would we be afraid of God? Right. He's our father. And I, I remember thinking that very distinctly. Why would, we, why would we be afraid of God? It never made sense to me. So mm -hmm. I was more spiritual before I even knew what that meant. Oh. I, I just never got... I never really believed the dogma mm -hmm. like God would send somebody to hell. Right. I thought yeah. just I, because, just because yeah. they don't, they don't happen to believe in something if they have a different belief system, why would God throw them into hell? I would, I would think God would only care about a religion or any religion that leads people closer to him. That's what he wants. I, I think that, you know, it's funny in the South, we call it hell. <laughs> and oh, when, yeah. <laughs> and when people <laughs> are dying, you know, or they're in the hospital and they're terminal, they'll run in and they'll try to like get them saved. You know, so they don't, they don't you yeah. know, go to hell or, or whatever you want to call it. But to yep. me, I don't, 
I don't, we have a loving God. It, it just doesn't work that way. The, the Absolutely. It just doesn't, none of that ever resonated with me. So I don't think it ever stuck because I just thought that I just don't connect with that. <laughs> yeah, I'm, I'm just like you. That's exactly how I believe. Yeah. Well, so now when you're going in for the surgery, you had to have your 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 tendons. You tore the tendons. Yeah, on my and, hand. And your really your fingers. Yeah, on my right hand. How, so, um, was that your writing hand that you? No, had? I'm I'm actually left-handed. Oh gosh, thank just, goodness. <laughs> yeah, it was good. <laughs> yeah, I, it was good to have it on my right hand because um all my life I've been left-handed. Wow. Okay. Good. Wow, that is good. So you must be a very creative underneath where you're using that left hand you just haven't tapped into all that yet exactly yep. yeah so um okay so you go in so this is probably uh this is by appointment this isn't like an emergency right so you oh no I, it was by appointment yeah the, okay. the surgery date was was scheduled in the future so i knew when i was going to go in you know john and before we go into your story i know you said it's the anesthesia and i just don't you know it's a, this is that you are the second person the ruth secreto also had the same thing with she's allergic to it and mm -hmm. died and i'm like you think there would be a test they could get people to find out yeah, that ex exactly right? and, and it was so it was such an odd feeling because i could feel it i could feel the anesthesia going through my veins it was the strangest feeling and then when it got to my heart it just uh stopped it just completely stopped yeah why do they not it's why do they assume thing. yeah why do they assume everybody can handle this because apparently some people can't and are allergic you would think there would be some kind of test for this like some people are allergic yeah. to latex gloves so i find that that um that odd they're still not they're still not doing that so uh so anyway and when this happens so they're knocking you out i guess intravenously mm -hmm. do you yep. do you have any recall that that you're slipping away how did this start happening no what happened is i closed my when the anesthesia got to my heart i remember my eyes closing and they just and i died and when I opened up my eyes, seconds later, I was on the other side. And it was, and it, at the time of this happened, I didn't know any of this language, any of this terminology, didn't even know what a spirit guide was, didn't even know what the other side really was or what heaven actually is. My first impression was that, wow, I had no idea the hospital was this large. <laughs> that, that was oh, my so first... Cute. Yeah, that was my first thought is where did they hide this 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 building it's unbelievable because <laughs> I, I i ended up in what they call the orientation center and it's this whoops it's this huge huge long long corridor building and it's a, it's a it's a temple when i when i had this happen my guide because we all have spirit guides my guide told me he said I am your spirit guide. My name is Alan. And at the time I, I had no idea what was going on. So I just went with it. And I ended up in this in this corridor that that was absolutely breathtakingly beautiful. And I just and I opened my eyes and I found myself there. And many years later, when I would think about this, I didn't have a, a near-death experience that has been associated with a lot of people that have had them. Mine was different. I didn't get, I didn't see myself get out of my body. I wasn't looking down from the ceiling. I didn't see a tunnel with a white light. Right. I didn't see anybody. There was no, right. yeah, I, I didn't have any of that. I just ended up on the other side somehow. Well, your heart stopped, right? It just stopped. Yep, it completely stopped. It was stopped so you, for seven minutes. So you just went, you just had a straight VIP pass right into heaven. Yeah, there, there you no, go. Right, there was no working. I told Jesus, that's what I want. I said, now look, I'm not into pain. So when we finally do this, I just want a straight <laughs> shot, you know, right there in your arms. Yeah, what I'd like, too. I'd like to bypass all that. And so he, he, I don't know why he thinks that's funny. I said, I'd like a white limo with some really <laughs> angels in yeah. it. I'd like to be yeah. brought on a red carpet right to you. And he's, he laughs at me a lot. So tell us, um, 
so you had this and you did, did you ever, when did you start realizing or asking yourself, where is this place? It was actually a couple days later when I was talking to my mom, I couldn't tell my dad and I couldn't tell my sister because I knew that they would have, they just wouldn't believe it. So I told my mom what happened and she said with the detail that you were able to come back with, you must have died and you must have seen heaven. And that's when I started really thinking about, wow, I guess I really did have something unique. And over the years, I have heard people talk about the buildings that I've seen, that I saw, mm -hmm. talk about the books, the libraries, um, some of the temples that I saw, and what goes on over there. And the more time that went on, I just realized that I had a really unique experience and I was able to see the other side and I was able to actually come back and share with people what I really saw. I talked to Jesus. I saw these beautiful ornate marble like buildings that were temples. They were absolutely beautiful. And the, the sense that you get when you're there is that you are so deeply loved by God, that you're cherished. It's it's a feeling that we don't have here on earth. It's almost like my wife told me, she said, what it's like to be on earth is like to be in a war and you're in a foxhole without a radio. So you're kind of, we're, we're cut off from God, except for people like you who are mediums, who can actually see and hear the other side. And people have often asked me if I ever had any kind of abilities or anything new when I had my near-death experience, and I didn't. The only thing that I came back with was a 100% recall memory of what happened. Because at that time, I believed that Jesus gave me a message, and he, he gave me a mission mm -hmm. that I was supposed to tell people that there is no death. He okay. said, right, it, right, he, and he was two feet from me. He said, you must tell them there is no death. So I just felt that that became my life mission. And ever since then, I've been sharing with people all the things that I saw. Right. Well, so, yeah. so now these temples that you saw, did they look, um, where, I mean, there were structures. Did yeah. they look clear? Do they look iridescent? What did they look no, like? This is this is the what's really strange is the other side. It's solid. It's it's as solid as it is here. It's just a different dimension, and that dimension is right next to the earth. It's really close by. There's a veil that separates both worlds, and their side of the veil is much thinner than ours is because all they have to do is look in and they can check on us and see us and they can hear us. This is beautiful explanation. I agree with you that yeah. with, with mediumship it, it's right next to you and they go, well, how was that? It's because like I lost my filter <laughs> and, yeah. and so I get, you know, the veil is there now, not like the other side of you're in heaven, they can see everything and check in and they can multitask and all of absolutely. that. But yep. you're absolutely right. I mean, it's just like, uh, I don't know, it's, it's a dimension. I, I mean, I almost want to mm -hmm. look at it like a layered cake. It's so close, but yeah, that we, is. yeah. we can't um, get there, but we do have access to God, but we have to really work at it to be able absolutely. to hear things. We do. Mm -hmm. I mean, you would think it'd be a little easier. Yeah. So um, when I was over there, I, I remember the feeling of breathing, like taking a deep breath. And I remember touching things because it was, it wasn't like my hand went yeah. through it. Exactly. And it was solid. It was solid. It was as real as this is, which makes me think, okay, where's the real place? Is that the real place? And this is the fake place? Exactly. This, this world is the illusion. It's the illusion that people think this is where they're from, that this is home. This isn't home. The other side is our real home. Yep. That's where we that's where we are for eternity. Bam, John, you are preaching it. That is so true. <laughs> bam, bam, yeah. bam. 
you're right. That is our real home. But I, I love sure. how you're explaining it, that it is just like here, that it's real. And mm -hmm. so things don't decay. So when I exactly of uh, what is it? Eternity is not necessarily a forever and ever eternal eternal is it's it's like a state of being like you don't have garbage mm -hmm. cans things don't rot that's exactly correct yeah there's no pollution there's no yeah. the other side it's I, ever since i had my experience i have never been able to put into words adequately what it's really like but it's the topography is similar to earth in terms of the buildings yeah. the the lakes the rivers, the oceans, the other side has all that, but they don't have all the things that make this world full of suffering. They don't have war. They don't have pollution. They don't have homelessness. They don't have hunger. None of those exist there. No, there's no hate. There, yes. uh, there anger. And to me, it's like all the grass, the flowers, uh, and so forth. Everything is praising God. Yep. Everything in harmony there's a harmonic thing going on there and you're just it's just it, it it's it's hard to believe but honestly that's our true state yeah it is that's our that's our real state and you know what yeah. was interesting these buildings as beautiful as they are they're they look like what you see like the um, what do you call it our our supreme court what their building looks like <laughs> with the columns is, the columns that, out front Yes, exactly. I know. They I, look like, yeah. I know I would, exactly what you're talking about. They look, uh, well, like when I've seen like the Hall of Records, they look like a kind of like a Smithsonian building, really important yes. and big. Like when you're yeah. in D.C. and you go to these big things, it kind of looks That's exactly. like that. Yeah, just like the Lincoln Memorial with the columns up front yeah. and the beautiful, yeah. beautiful white marble. but. It, it's so much more than that because just like you mentioned to go about nature, the flowers, the, the trees, the, the, they have so many gardens there. It's absolutely beautiful. There's one part of my experience where I know I'm kind of jumping around. So let me know. If no, you're we're just having fun. I, I just, whatever okay. comes up, because I know we're going to go into more detail, but I think this is helpful because you're right. There's really no vocabulary to explain. I will say this. Um, I mean, Jesus, when he left, and this is my opinion here, and I, I, I believe this to be true. When he said the Lord's prayer, which he gave to us, he said, do as in heaven, as an earth, as yeah. in heaven. So yep. th it is a mirror, except for, again, all the bad stuff. That part's gone, like no mean people or exactly. know, garbage yep. or anything. But, um, but it is a mirror. So all the beautiful things that we see here, they have beautiful places. Have, so if you want yep. to live at the beach in heaven, fine. If you want to live in the forest in heaven, fine. Absolutely. That's exactly correct. And there's a, something happens to all of us when, when we die, we go through the tunnel, but nobody ever knew what happens because they all had, they all, they were all told to come back. They said it wasn't your time. Mm -hmm. Well, what I saw, I was able to see the other side of what that white light looks like. And what it is, it's an orientation center. It was so long and so vast that I couldn't see the end of it. It looked like it had been miles, just miles of, of this building. <laughs> and what it was, it was made of white marble mm -hmm. and there were doorways or tunnels off to the left. And they were about six feet apart and they were all the way down the whole corridor of this building. So was it we, like that? Yes. Yeah. <laughs> yes, it was just like that. Exactly. I, I saw it too. Okay, yeah, that's that's the first time I've ever seen a picture of it. Yeah, isn't that cool? Yeah, and, and if you look to the if you looked up to the left, uh -huh. that's where the tunnels were. And to the right were all the columns. When we come through these tunnels, mm -hmm. we go into the orientation center. And we're greeted by counselors because a lot of a lot of times when people come into life on the earth, they forget their real home. Yeah. And and that's something that is intentional. I don't I understand how God does that, but somehow when we come into life, we have amnesia. 
we don't remember who we really are, where you're, we're really you're from. Spot, you're absolutely spot on. Well, yeah. well, you know what? Here's a simple example. You know why I think that is? Imagine if you've always been like a famous football player, right? And you're like famous and you're really, yeah. really, you're really good at it. So now you're coming back again to this world and your occupation is being a football player. Yeah. What fun would it be when you know you've won every game in your entire, you know, whatever, that now you're yeah. back again. There has to be some amnesia so you can learn the lessons and you can exactly. pretend to strive and do well. Yep. But if people knew they could never really, we if we if we knew we couldn't really lose at life you would never pass the test yeah because we honestly we really can't lose because in the end <laughs> we're yeah, all good and, yeah in, in the end no matter what happens the other side is real and that's where we're going to go but yeah. it is it is uh i wish i knew the dynamics of how they could how they could create that amnesia I don't know how they do it, but they do. So it's when like people come, black, when they click yeah. that and they go poof. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so when they and what these counselors do, there were two counselors at each one of these tables that was right in front of the tunnel. So when somebody dies, they come through the tunnel and they see when they go through the white light, they come out into the orientation center where these people talk to them. Well, what I saw my guide told me to look at the next tunnel. So as I looked up, I saw a man who was probably in his 80s or 90s, and he was holding, he had his right hand mm -hmm. holding his left chest. And my guide said he had died on earth of a heart attack. And he had come through the tunnel, and one of these women stood up. She walked over to the tunnel. She took this man by his hands. And she walked him back over and sat down and he was sitting across from her and she, the whole time she was talking to him, she, she was holding his hands and what was going on. And this, this was being fed to me by my guide. Mm -hmm. Everything was happening in my left ear. He was telling me, mm -hmm. so I was, I was understanding what was going on as he told me. And he said that what she is doing is she is reminding him of his real self because he just came back from an earth life. He doesn't remember where he came from. So they have this orientation and these people that are there all are called orientation counselors. And they tell people, you just came back from an earth life. Mm -hmm. You died of a heart attack or however you, however you crossed. And now you're back on the other side. Well, the, in my guide said at that point, watch him. Cause I was watching her talk to him. Well, as I watched mm -hmm. him, the most remarkable thing happened. He began to change from a man who was 80 or 90 into a man who was in his 30s. And I was told all of us are in our 30s on the other side. I didn't think to ask why that was, but that's how we appear. We all appear in our 30s. Well, as soon as that happened, he stood up and he walked off to the right. And that picture you had, you were just, you just had on up a second ago, that one about yeah. the columns. Yeah. They walk to the right of those columns and they walk mm -hmm. down three steps because mm -hmm. the left, the left hand side, they come from the tunnels in their mm -hmm. earth life and the right hand side, they walk down these steps and mm -hmm. they walk into what is called their reunion. And this was one of the most beautiful parts about the other side is when you cross over, and you come back to the other side, it's like a huge, huge party. Everybody you've oh ever gosh. known. Okay. So everybody, me... you, yeah, your family, your friends, everybody you've loved is there to greet you. And it's a huge deal. It's a big deal to come back from an earth life. <laughs> okay, so let me validate you right here. This is adorable. This is so adorable. And I want you to tell more about this. So, you know, I'm a medium. My near-death experiences, I think, really prompted that at three. But anyway, I'll have someone who's in hospice. And sometimes the family will say, we need to know whether we should start flying in or are they going to oh, pass? Yeah. And I used to just go, no, don't ask me that. But now but I get yeah. people, families coming in. And you know what, what the spirit people tell me is so precious. They'll go, 
no, we're not decorating for the party yet. Or yeah. they'll go, oh, it's going to be so much fun. Everybody's going to be here and we're going to even serve pizza. Yeah. <laughs> and then it's like a party and they make their name up there. Oh, and yeah. like, it's a yeah. huge. And I think, oh, how precious. I told Jesus I wanted a disco party. I said, we already know Donald Summer's over there. And he winked and he goes, I could arrange that. <laughs> so well, would you, um, well, this would you party. When you mention the garden and the flowers and everything, they it's it's called the gardens. When they when they cross over from the tunnel, they have their orientation. They walk into the gardens where they have the reunions, and I saw it, and it's absolutely, it's indescribable how beautiful the fauna, the the flowers, the trees, the plants, the grass. There were colors there that we don't have here on Earth. It was absolutely mm -hmm. just right. breathtaking. It's it was so like bigger. Yeah, it was like an an English garden that was yeah, perfectly it yeah. It, it oh was perfectly God. tailored and it was absolutely stunning. So that's what yes. people do when they get back, and it's such a huge deal because they told me that of all the planets we can go to, the Earth is the hardest one. Oh God! So yeah. when you have when you come into a lifetime here and you experience all the hardships you have to experience, it's a huge deal when you get back because you've gone through so much and you've learned so much. And that's the reason we go in. You come into life for really two reasons. The first one is because you want to learn, experience, grow spiritually. But the second one is to help end suffering by helping people because that's what they ask you when you get back. They don't ask you, how much money did you make? What kind of job did you have? What kind of car did you drive? Nobody ever cares about that. All they really care about is who did you help? Did you help people? Were you there to make a difference? And that's what matters. And then after they have the, the reunion, they take them to what's called a life review. And you've probably heard that term many times. I had. I had no idea what it was, but at the time, at the time that I had this, when I was 21, I'd never heard of any of these terms. I didn't know anything. Yeah. But after the reunion, they take you to this building. It's round, and when you walk into it, it's it's kind of you know what a movie theater looks like. It, is it like it's kind of like the IMAX? Yes, it, it, it's almost exactly like that. But instead of one large screen, it's all around bunch. Yes, of exactly. It's a, it's a circle with all the. There's there must be yeah. twenty or thirty screens that are up there, and when you're there, they somehow have the ability. And I, and again, I don't know how they do this. Sure. Yeah. But they can somehow your lifetime is recorded. And you and it plays back to you when your life yeah. review what your life was like, and exactly Tamara, right. it was it was so bizarre because it had conversations, like okay. you and I, you and I having a conversation right now when you talk to your guests like this, it's recorded, and I don't have any any clue how in the world that that happens, but it does, because when I looked at the when I looked at those screens that were in the, in that circle like that every single screen was playing a different part of my life. One when I was a little kid, one when I went to kindergarten, one when I was in first grade, second grade, junior high, high school, it had all of that was playing. And I just thought, oh my gosh, the a life review really is a life review. And we have those so we can see how we did. Because we all have goals and ideals mm -hmm. and a reason for our lifetime it's not just random we come in for a specific reason absolutely absolutely yeah. and our own personal journey not only is it our own personal journey but it's the but it's the journey also the collective how we influence other other people now yeah. i know danny and brinkley and his book saved from the life yeah. i was in I've my read it Oh, really? When I was nope. in my 20s, I, I read that and I was like, oh my God, uh, the, uh, yeah. you know, the beings of light, I recognize all these things. But he talked about, because he was a soldier, he experienced things not only from his point of view, but the point of view where he hurt the other person in the family. He got to yeah. feel their pain. Did you experience that too? 
Yeah, that's exactly it. You you feel what your actions did to somebody else. If and it, it's it's not just the negative ones, it's also the positive ones. So the things that you did that helped somebody, maybe even it, it was just, and it's so weird because the other side looks at the small things as huge and you would never think twice about it. Like if you're walking down the street and you see a homeless person sitting on sitting next to a building outside and you offer them money, you think nothing of that. But the other side to them, that is absolutely huge because you weren't selfish. You weren't thinking about yourself the whole time. And you tried and you may have made a difference for that person's day for the whole day. And that is huge for them on the other side. That's just a, they they love that. Can I tell you, you're doing it again. <laughs> what? Yep. You know what Jesus told me? Yep. Uh, I told you, he, he, he wants you to talk. He wants you to speak out and you're doing a great job. But okay. he told me uh, when I was on the other side and I was in heaven, I was dead, dead, at least 15 minutes. But I, they, I saw them cover me up. It was longer. It was not, it's not wow. good. It's kind of sad, but not too sad. So I hung out with Jesus, but, um, he said that through the small things, it he said through the big things, it was the small things to be acknowledged and through the small things, it was the big things that would be done. And you just, yeah. said it. you just gave validation. See, yep. Absolutely. There you go. Jesus is talking through you all the time, but you don't realize it. See, I told yeah. you that. That's probably true. I maybe yeah. I know more than I think I do. That's right. <laughs> so, uh, wow, this is just, I'm actually getting the chills you talking because I'm, I'm just, uh, I just have to validate you. This is everything that I, I feel and know to be true as well. Oh, good. good. So, um, and then as you're talking, uh, uh, Talk about the party and the reunion and then, uh, no, and then the life review again. Yeah, I want to go through that okay? Um, because that's, um, I mean, there's an order to things. And I think that's the big thing you're saying. They, there's a way you come in. There's an the orientation. Yeah. Confused. And yep. I also like how you mentioned about earth. And I've heard that too. I mean, I don't have evidence on that. Only thing I can say is look at the newspaper, look at the news. I mean, it's not always a pretty place. Yeah. So, um, yeah. And it's hard uh, being here, and they know that, and I think that's why they offer so much support on the other side. Oh yeah, they do. When, when I when I saw this man come over, he must have had, I don't know how many people that were there to greet him, hundreds it seemed like, and there were people that had crossed before him, and that happens for all of us, whether we have we lost children yeah. or our parents or uncles and aunts and everybody, family, friends, everyone is there to greet you. And it's just a big, huge party to welcome you back home because you were able to, you, you accomplished it. You, you ran the race, you did your best. Oh my God, and, you're exactly right. And that's how they look at it. They look like yeah. that. That's why we say we have a fan club in heaven because they're literally rooting us on because they know it's not easy here. And now they Absolutely. are with the divine and they're, you know, they accomplished it. And they're, yep. um, you know, they really acknowledge us being here because they know it's not easy. Absolutely. It, it's, it's definitely not easy. Some people have losing, losing parents, you know, those are losing a child mm -hmm. and, since I've been telling people my experience, what happened to me, mm -hmm. I have been getting emails from people and yeah. I never knew that so many people had experienced the loss of a child. Yes. And not just a little kid, but a child who might be in their 40s. You, lose, you still lose a child. And I had no idea that it happens as frequently as it does because people would ask me, is it really true what you saw? I'm like, absolutely it's true. They will be with their child again. Yeah. No one is ever lost to us. They're just in a different place. Have you ever seen that movie? Um, uh, what is it? Uh, in, uh, in Dreams, not his dreams. Really. Oh, I know what you mean. What, what uh, dreams Kudu, may come. My dreams would come at Kudu, uh, uh, Kuba Kudu, Gooding Jr. Kuba Gooding and uh, Robin Williams. Yeah, yeah, I saw it. I've seen it twice. Uh, I th it's really good, and it? it's fair. I don't know about the yeah. hell part. That is kind of weird. But the other part um, about ima the imagining and the colors and 
seeing the yeah. people again. I mean, I could I could definitely connect with that. So, you yeah. know, t talk to people about um, children. It's a very touchy thing when that happens, because um, what I've been told always is, especially if um, a child, a baby, they have that VIP pass straight into heaven. Mm -hmm. Now, um, I have um, um, I have seen children that have passed and they come through and they grow up to about the age everybody else looks because exactly. no, there is no age, yeah. but grandparents and relatives will be their guardian as they grow up to where they look 30 something. Mm -hmm. But, um, I, um, I, I have a son over there that, I, I mean, yeah, it was, uh, it was a miscarriage and, but he comes through all the time through mediums and, 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 you know, when I even think about them, I want to cry because it's, um, it's a love that it's yeah. just a bond, but he comes through like an angel because he was never really here to be human, yeah. but miscarriages come through a lot too, as well, not just babies and, and children, but they literally do get a VIP pass. Did mm -hmm. you see children? Cause you can be a child there if you want to, but if yeah. you experience it, but, um, most people don't want to experience being old again. Yeah. <laughs> they yeah. do sometimes with children, but did you see children and do you want to respond to what you think, um, that happens to the children when they get there. I mean, that's my take yeah. on it. They go straight in and they're taken care of. Yeah, absolutely. And, and when I was over there, the the place where I saw the most people was in the library. And this library, I think, is what people call the Hall of Wisdom or what, what you had, what you said oh, really? earlier, because yeah. it is it is absolutely gigantic. If you, if you can picture... The, the largest building you've ever seen on earth multiply it by a hundred and that's what you might get to look at this building well when it was when i was in this library i saw people everywhere doing all kinds of things studying reading looking for books talking but i didn't see any kids and i don't know how long a soul stays a child because that 85 year old man or 90 year old man when he died and he crossed over he went back to his normal age of 30 or 33 mm -hmm. well the same thing happens to kids when they cross over we're just their caretakers they're actually god's children so when they come over Definitely. they uh i don't i don't think they stay children for very long but they can ha they have the ability to take on whatever whatever visage or whatever vision they want to have of themselves. So when their parents, when they cross over, that person, that child that died can appear to them so that they would remember him or her. Yes, I agree. And the time is not the same. And when they grow up, it, it, may, yeah. it may not be the same as in human years. I will tell you though, in readings, they'll tell me things like they would be 17 now. Yeah. Yeah. And they would go, yeah, you know, or, or you were only 22 and they would be, I mean, they know the age they know. And let me tell you, I've had many uh, times in readings, even uh, group readings where they'll point out their mom and dad. Oh yeah. The children do not forget that. I found that photograph you're talking. I know it's not perfect, but you're just seeing a really big library like that. Is that what you're and saying? I, I got to tell you something when you're ready about the library that just blew my mind. Oh, yeah. It's, it's just, yeah. I mean, sure. Whenever. Okay. This is, this is probably one of my most favorite parts of this whole near-death experience. In, in addition to this library just being so massive, anything you want to read about or learn about, you go here, and it's, everything's there. Well, off to the left my guide took me to these rooms that were off to the left of the library. And even our libraries here on earth, they have study rooms. It was kind of like that. And he took me to one room that was off to the left of the, on the side of the, the left of the, of the library. And this room was about 10 feet by 15 feet. It was kind of large, like a, like maybe a master bedroom would be. And there was a, a what looked like to, like to me at the time, was a flat screen television and we didn't have anything like that when i had my experience so i didn't really know what it was it's but true, yeah. today i would describe it as it looked like 
a flat screen TV that was large, like 50 or 60 inch screen. And there was a woman who was sitting on this couch. Her back was to me. She had jet black long hair that went down to her waist. And she was wearing a purple gown, kind of like a, uh, maybe like a tunic or a robe. It, it was really, really a comfortable kind of clothing. Mm -hmm. So she was here in this room and she was watching something that happened in the past. She was watching a video of a war, of a battle that had happened between the American Indians. The, I think it was the Lakota tribe and the American cavalry. And my guide told me that you come to these rooms to research and to learn. So what this girl was doing is she wanted to research and learn about the Plains Native American Wars. And I thought, I remember thinking to myself, okay, wait a second, how is it possible that I was in the hospital having surgery? I'm on the other side and I'm in this building inside of a room with this woman who was watching this video of a live event. And I, I asked in my head to my guide, we didn't have video cameras or cameras back then. How was this possible? And he said, God records everything. So these rooms, you can go and look at anything, anything you want to research, whether it's the d-day invasion of france on june 6 1944 if you want to go see that you can anything in history that has happened you can actually go to these rooms and see it because one of the things about the other side that i love so much is that there is such an emphasis on learning yeah. and growing continuing sure. your knowledge it's it's you just love to learn over there you, you know, you're, you know, people don't realize that it's, and I think that it's great how you're explaining it and really kind of slowing it down for people to get, it's a, it's like here, but just better. Absolutely. But I've had uh, in readings, there was uh, someone that, that came through and I, and, and it was, a, they were a musician and they started naming music. I'm studying with, and they started naming these wow. famous musicians and I didn't know who they were. And they yeah. said, oh, yeah, he was a guitar player. He loved him. And I was like, OK. So wow. they're like apprentice with people that, um, you know, that maybe they would have liked or, or what have you. Um, also, what's come up as with um, like if you look at like, uh, say, for example, a Disney film or whatever, there are people that are telling people here that are giving information, like helping them with, make movies or storylines or yeah. And and the, and there's classes you can take on everything. I mean, there's just like so yeah. many classes, and they tell me that like what they do over there. Like uh, one yeah. family, the doctor and a uh, family doctor. No, he's a skin <clears throat> dermatology doctor here. But over there, he was learning tectonic plates in the the land, the way it shifted. Oh, interesting. And the person said, "Yeah, he always wanted to do that." So like, there's so much to do there. There is. <laughs> yeah, you can. You can go hiking, you can write, you can you can cook if you want if you love cooking, you can go play sports, you can go swimming, anything that you want to do. And one of the most beautiful things about it is you can do things just because you love to do them. You don't have to pay you don't have to work to pay your rent or pay your mortgage or pay bills. You just do things because you love to do it. That's what so that's what I can't wait to get back for. I want to meet Bruce Lee. I oh, yeah, I, so cool. I love martial arts. I used to take my kids. We used to go to karate all the time. Oh, yeah. And somebody well, I'm, I want to meet a lot of people over there, but I really want to talk and meet Bruce Lee. He just, oh, yeah. uh, why not? I mean, he already yeah. knows that. As soon as you said it, he already knows. I mean, some yeah. people, people don't come through unless you know him real well. I've had people that have studied like their career and pattern it after someone and that person's come through wow. um, because they're studying them. Why not? If you spend your life or if you're like a musician and you study the Beatles, they've yeah. come through and they, they know that you're, they go, Oh, thanks. You know, <laughs> they know that you're yeah. studying their stuff. So yeah, it is, it is fascinating that, um, 
let's see, I wanted to, there was a part on there I wanted to make sure that you covered. So when I was there, I could also be underwater and breathe. Now, I don't know how that's possible, yeah. but, I could, but there's things that it's just not exactly the same, but it just is, it felt a lot um, better, but people do come through and they, they do stuff like ride motorcycles and different kinds of things. Mm -hmm. So, um, and I want to see what you think about this, but Jesus told me that they may, that in heaven, that you think about something and it happens. Like you want to go scan the Alps, boom, you're in front of the Alps here on earth. It's the same thing. He said, it just takes a lot longer to manifest and you have to, um, yeah. keep working at it and focusing and not letting other thoughts in. Um, but he said over there, if you want to think about something like I asked him about electricity, uh, you can actually get downloads all the time instead of like your Google <laughs> yeah. and, and, and he's, and I just knew it. So yeah. did yeah. you get that too? You just asked, Oh, how to boom. You well, just know that. What I saw when I was in that library building, you can, if you're looking for something, mm -hmm. it would take, if you wanted to find a book and th that book was, a mile away you're not going to spend yeah. your time walking there right. you can actually think it you think yeah. where you want to go and you can actually yeah. go to where that where that section of the books are that's so cool i know yeah, it's absolutely phenomenal it's you the can same actually think it yeah and and if you think oh i'd like to be by a lake boom you're by a lake yeah, yeah. yeah absolutely and so yeah. and and then i was looking at uh here's some english gardens but that's it looks almost kind of kind of um whatever uh it's, it's a little softer than that but uh tell us now let's i want to you guys you're covering so much so after the reunion and then they go to they see their life review um who do you um i mean i've heard different things i you know have thoughts on it too but who do you think they're not alone when they're looking at that life review there's other people with them who did you yeah. see with them the per the person like for me for example it's your guide your guide is the one that reviews your life because he or she is the one that helped you plan your life, that helped you plan what is it you want to accomplish? What are your goals? What do you want to learn? What do you want to accomplish? And God, nobody actually judges you. You're not judged. You were the one that judges yourself on what you wanted to achieve. Did you actually accomplish what you chose to accomplish? That's the first thing. Mm -hmm. And then the second thing is, did you help anybody? Did you make a difference? And something I read just recently, it actually made my heart just sing. It was a, kind of an, an, a, a sad event, but you know who Jeff Bezos is? The founder of Amazon? Oh, yes. Yeah, he and his wife got a divorce recently they they were married for 25 years and they got a divorce and she had a huge settlement it was billions of dollars and i read that she took three billion dollars of that and she gave it away to 363 different charities around the world wow. and my it just i thought she got it she gets it she understands that you're here to help end suffering to make a difference so she, and she donated to organizations that provide food, provide clothing to kids all over the world and meals and fresh water. And what she did will have repercussions for people for years to come, mm -hmm. making a difference with her life. And that's what we're here for. Wow. Yeah, it's making a difference. And I guess the next question I can hear people now in the comments, why do we have to suffer? That's yeah. the next one. Um, what what do you think about that? Why do you feel people have to suffer? We put in our lifetimes things that we want to overcome. And if you think about your life, and I, I had a hard time trying to conceptualize this. But when you look at your life and you think to yourself, when did I learn the most? And it was usually due to something that was painful, whether it was a divorce or a breakup or god forbid you lose one of your kids or some some just a sad thing happens that's what you learn from because on the other side when we're there when we're back home 
everything is perfect. Nobody dies. There's no relationship breakups. Nobody gets sick. There's no cancer there. You don't lose animals. Nobody, nobody gets old. All of those things happen here on earth to test us. And we have to, it, just, it, it, it seems like the best way for us to learn is to go through something that is hard. Because I know when I look back at my life, the things that made me grow the, mo grow the most were some of the hardest things I've ever been through. So that's my take on it. It's, it's all for learning and we, we test ourselves. Well, uh, yes, and I think that um, that uh, I think sometimes God uh, has a little test for us, but yeah. but He knows yeah. the answer. He knows that we're going to win. Everything's yep. going to be great. But when you look at there is there is no death, and we're all back together, and everybody gets along, even the people that couldn't stand one another. Yep, Maybe all that ego, all that's that ego all gone. Is gone. Yep, it's all gone. It's all washed away. And some of it's just people agreed, okay, I'll be the bad guy this time. <laughs> yeah. I, and, and they're yeah. not really that way. They're just playing a part so you can learn. Yeah, we're all playing roles. We all, yeah, and that's, and that's, on, and a lot of people never come into earth because it's too hard. They don't want to experience that. And I, I tell people that because they say, why would I ever want to leave the other side when it's absolute paradise? Why leave that? Well, it's trying to explain to someone what is it like to ride a bike. You can try to explain to somebody what it's like until you're blue in the face, but they won't understand it until they actually ride a bike and do it for themselves. Right. So that's yeah. it's it's the experience, it's the learnings, it's the knowledge that we come in for, because we don't have those same opportunities on the other side where everything is perfect for us. Right. And then you wonder why people agree to come back a lot of times yeah. if, you, if you're given a choice, if it's an ND or why, if you're in the other realm and to come back and incarnate, why would you mm -hmm. do that? Um, yeah. To me, you're in a different altered state and uh, yeah. kind of euphoria. I don't know. You look at, to me, I look at Jesus, beautiful blue, green eyes and I go, okay, sure. I wouldn't even think about it. I'll go, okay. Yeah. Uh, and you know, we don't think about it until we're here and we go, gee, this is kind of hard sometimes. Yeah, it sucks. And, and <laughs> what, I, what, I, what I realized was that when you're on the other side and you're planning a lifetime, a lifetime to the people on the other side can be like 30 days. It's yeah. because time doesn't exist there. So you think when you're planning a lifetime, oh, that sounds like something I could I could go through. I'm going to go through that and experience what that's like. Well, on the other side, everything is it's it's such a short time period that you're going to be on the earth that people decide to try to test themselves and take on things just to see if they can how they're going to do. Put in obstacles, you put in trials, you put in tribulations for yourself mm -hmm. because if you wanted to have a life that was absolutely perfect and no challenges, there would be no reason to come in here. You would just stay on the other side. Right. So people, people come in here for specific lessons and things that they want to learn and accomplish. And something too I wanted to share with you and your listeners is there was a place that they took me to that was, it's, it's like a planetarium. Okay. And it is the size of a football stadium. It's enormous. Mm -hmm. And a lot of people have been to a planetarium. I'm sure where you walk in, you sit down, you look up at the ceiling yeah. and they show the planets. Yeah. Well, my guy took me to one of these and somebody else started talking to me. It wasn't my guide anymore. It was somebody else. And he said, let's get started. Go ahead and sit down. So I sat down and there, there were thousands of seats but I was the only person there and the lights went off and he's in this, in this voice behind me, there was a guy that I pictured him as being the person who ran the planetarium. And he said, when you look at the stars, meaning all of us, humanity from the earth, when we look at the stars, this is what we see. And he showed our planets, our solar system, Mars, Jupiter, Venus, all of these planets started showing up up on the on the top of the of the ceiling. And he said, 
when we look at the stars, meaning people on the other side, this is what we see. And all of a sudden, planets started showing up, one after another. Planets that were outside of our solar system. Blue, green, yellow, brown planets. And all of those planets had the same schematic of having lifetimes that we do on Earth. But of, out of all of the planets we can go to, Earth is the hardest one. That's why I want. That's what I wanted to share. Is that when we come here, we accomplish so much by going through a lifetime, and by going through trials, and those same trials don't exist on other planets. Other planets have evolved farther than the Earth has evolved. So that's why we come here. That's one of the main reasons. You know, uh, you're, 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 I have to agree with you again. Um, I've had UFO experts, people that have been in the field 35, 40 years, people that have talked to aliens and so forth. Oh, yeah. And they'll say, you know, that, that this is the most difficult one yep. um, out of all of them. But it's an honor to be here because it we're going to help humanity. And, and exactly. it's tough. So th there's actually a people standing waiting in line to come to Earth. I've heard that too. I've heard that before. Yeah, because it's a big deal. But since I sort of having these guests on now, I'm like getting uh, communication from, you know, they're actually, I think, I think we're related to some of the, I mean, we're, I don't think we're that distant. And I'm not talking about the grays. I'm talking about other higher level. Yeah love unity they don't have problems like we do here i mean they're exactly. actually very um i don't know i guess advanced in that way um mm -hmm. and now i'm getting that because i just kind of thought really hmm and so i started looking at that now i'm like but yeah. um it's not the it's um harmonious it's not like here but it's kind of like a badge of, uh, uh, of badge honor. of honor yeah absolutely yep it's absolutely so Someone told me uh, recently, I was like, it was interesting. He said that um, that when you come to Earth and then you're back to go back on the other side and you have all these different uh, solar systems and different galaxies, they're they're mm -hmm. coming in, feeding through too. Yeah. They're, they're like, they can always tell you've been to Earth. I said, why are we like the ghetto on Earth? He goes, a little bit. We're like the rough <laughs> place. <laughs> yeah. But they're like, wow, what was it like? What an adventure, right? Well, absolutely. It's exactly what you said. It's it's a rough place. You're exactly correct. It, you know, it can be, but then it's got the beauty the same as yep. heaven does too. So exactly. that is fascinating. So when they showed you the planets, did they tell you that were you told like how many solar systems that we no, have? No, they um they showed me all these different planets and they were showing up like hundreds thousands 10,000 I mean there were just innumerable planets and the the guy said behind me he said there's more life in the universe mm -hmm. than you possibly can know so that so we can go anywhere in our I was reading something just the other day about this about just the milky way galaxy and how large just our galaxy is and they were saying something like there's 200 billion suns in our galaxy. And out of all those planets, all those stars, even if it was a small fraction that those, that that star system had a, uh, what do you call it? A, um, when you have planets, our, our solar system, mm -hmm. if, a, if only a small part had a solar system, that means there are millions of planets just in our galaxy alone that you can go to and think about all the galaxies that are out there. I don't know if you've ever heard of, have you heard of the Hubble telescope? Yeah, of course. Yeah. Yeah. yeah they, they did a study and I, I did a talk on this once. There was a study called the deep field and they, they focused the Hubble on a, on a part in space, whereas if you looked at it with the naked eye, all that looked like was just blackness. Well, they focused in on this and they took pictures over 11 days. When they got those developed, you know what they found? Mm -hmm. One what? of those pictures had 10,000 galaxies in that picture. 
So can you imagine what that, how large the universe really is? It's unfathomable how large it is. We can't even picture how big our own galaxy is. To get from one end of our galaxy to the other, just for the Milky Way, right. it's years and years. It's just right. the, the yeah. size. Yeah, exactly. It's solar that's system. Just, that's just ours. Yeah, our solar system, exactly. And, and if all in all the planets that are out there have a star or have a sun, and they have the same kind of schematic that we do, that you can go into a lifetime and learn and develop. But this, the Earth, is the hardest of them all. Right. Well, I hope we're I hope we're doing a good job progressing people along, and and that we're progressing along. And mm -hmm. and I know there's setbacks, and I know there's no such thing as perfection. There's no such thing. Right. But uh, you know, it comes back to the love as loving for loving something else besides yourself. Of course, you want to love yourself. That's good. Yep. But also yep. caring and loving about other people too. And it's Absolutely. tricky. Because not everybody will let you love them. <laughs> yeah, that's true. And when you do, they think, "What's wrong with you?" You know, or do you have a motive? Yeah. So it's uh, it's it's a bit tricky. So, but but just the intention of of being more of a loving person, I think, just putting that intention in the world is helpful. Absolutely, I agree. So now, when you let that's fascinating of all the different things. Was he able to show you different species? No, I was looking at the planets like I was in orbit. Just okay. looking down and seeing what color that it was. Like like if you looked at the Earth, you would see the ocean, you'd see the continents. That's what I saw. But I, I didn't see any of the life forms that were there. Just that there were millions of them. Right. Multi-millions of different life forms. Oh, gosh. Well, look at look at the animals. Look at the creatures. I mean, look at humans. We look really different. Yeah. We come in all different shapes and colors and sizes. <laughs> mm -hmm. and yep, exactly. Look at nature. I mean, a rhinoceros yeah. looks completely different than a duck. Exactly. Yep. And, and gosh knows what these different planets look like. So after you went there, wow, quite a journey. This is amazing. Uh, where did you go from there? Where did your guide take you? The next place he took me to was another, another favorite one of mine. Probably, I would say, it was my second favorite right after that viewing room in the library. On the other side, there are... It's kind of like going on the most incredible vacation you could imagine. It's, it's magical. Well, on the other side, there are so many ways that you can learn. And one of the ways you can learn is you can actually go to places that have the buildings that were there on Earth. And what I mean by that is a castle. My guide took me to a castle that was an exact replica of a castle that was on the earth during the time the mid the medieval ages mm -hmm. when they had kings and queens sure. and well this he took me in front of a castle and every time he showed me a new building he took me outside first so i could see what it looked like and then he would take me inside so i saw that it was a large just a, a really large castle he took me inside, and inside was a beautiful red carpet that you'd walk on throughout the whole castle. And off to the left and off to the right, when you walk in, are life-size paintings of the people that lived during that time on Earth's history. Like, like King George, for example. Let's say yeah. this castle, King George was the king of this castle for 50 years, for example they had a life-size picture of him on the wall. And they had these pictures of every single, uh, what do they call them? They call them uh, royals. They call them royals. Yeah. Of all the royals who lived in that time period in that castle. And the picture of them was very detailed. It looked just like they did during their lifetime. So if you wanted to come in and see what a castle looked like during that period of Earth, you can go see these castles and in front of every single one of those pictures there was a podium and on that podium was a book and that book was a book about that person's lifetime on earth oh. it had it had where they were born who their parents were what they did in terms of did they help the people at all were they 
Were they selfish with their authority? Did they help people? Did they make a difference? And it even has conversations that they had in their lifetime in this book. And it was absolutely phenomenal. Well, off to the right, I looked over to my right, and there was a woman who was coming down from a staircase. The, the castles had, a lot of times they had those round staircases. Yes. This one had a round staircase, and she was coming down. And my guide told me that what she does, what she does on the other side is kind of like a scholar. She's a scholar of that particular history on Earth of the kings and the queens and the princes and the and the she knew all about the wars the battles the struggles that was what she loved to do on the other side she was a teacher well here's what happened she walked up to me so she could see me and she said there's anything i can help you find and i thought to myself oh my gosh i don't even know where i am i don't even know what's going on so you know what I said? Yeah. The stupidest thing I could have said, I said to her, and I said, no, thank you. I'm just looking around. And that's <laughs> what we do when you walk, when you go to a store. You say, no, I'm just looking around. <laughs> and I, I remember kicking myself thinking, I could have asked this girl anything. And instead, I said, no, I'm just looking around. So that even yeah. to this day, I think, gosh, I could have learned so much from her. Well, you were taking in a lot, you know? Yeah. It's yeah. all right. So she was like, kind of like when you go on these historical places and they're in their, the costume of that time, Absolutely. Who's an expert, that's what she was, an expert. That's what she was. That. Yep. That is, that is amazing. And you're right. This just proves more learning and about how learning is so yeah. important. Uh, wow. And they have, they have those kind of buildings for everything, not just castles, but every type of history that we went through in life is all represented on the other side. So you can learn about, you can learn by video. You can learn by going to one of those castles. You can learn by reading books about their lives. And there's just so many ways to learn and to keep growing. It was, oh, like, yeah. mm -hmm. it was like you never you never wanted to leave there. <laughs> and I think that's why nobody gave me the option to stay. Nobody said, like you hear a lot of near-death experiences, they'll yeah. tell you. They'll say, I was given a choice or yeah. I wasn't given a choice. And they told yeah. me no. It's not your time. Well, nobody told me that. They just sent me back. And the last person that I saw was Jesus. Mm -hmm. And he, when, when he said, you must tell them there is no death. As soon as he said that, I woke up back in the operating room. And that was, that was the very last part of the experience was Jesus. Uh, what a great way to end. Wow. I think if you if you uh, if talk much longer to him, you would you would not want to go back. I argued to stay. Yeah. Oh, I I would have not wanted to come back at all. I wanted mm -hmm. I would want to stay there. It's it's more of a paradise than I can. Words just can't describe what it's really truly like there. And it's it's hard to be here when you know what it's like there. It is, and there's a lot of near death experience that have moments of sadness because they remember. But then I get people commenting, so we should address this. Um, well, if it's so great and you're really selling this, you know, <laughs> you know, why are we here? Here's the thing. We yep. can't shortcut it. If we're here for a mission, we're here to do what we're supposed to do, yep. uh, whatever that is. And they're usually simple things. Take care of your family, spread love, whatever it is. Yep. If we don't complete what we're supposed to then we're going to have to pick back up. It's like repeating third grade. You're going to have to do it again. Yeah. So yep. There's no easy outs, but once you have a glimpse and remember how uh, so much love and that it's beautiful, but I experience more of seeing the structures and seeing things. Some people now have, because I've had a few, um, not to promote that, but yeah. I've seen the tunnel. It felt like a tunnel. It probably was a portal, you know, yeah. was, I don't know. Yeah. Um, I've seen that. But when I was dead, dead, when I was five, I was dead, dead from pneumonia. I came in a uh, dead on arrival. I saw structures. I saw the places. I saw things. Um, not, not like um, because I had gone to a higher level where there was actually structures and things. And I've yeah. had people say um, to me before, well, 
um, you, wouldn't you be nothingness? I was nothingness in other ones where I was nothingness and I was kind of in the Milky Way looking around. I was, I don't know, it was looked like the galaxy, uh, yeah. but uh, kind of like this behind me, it kind of looked like that. But yep, exactly. with this one, I went straight and I did see structures and it was, it, it felt real, it felt solid like here. Yeah. Uh, but I would call it paradise. Matter of fact, there's a song that um, it's uh, Jesus in my song is a disc of oh, yeah. song. and it's like, I'll meet you. It's by change. I'll meet you in paradise. And, yep. and it's because um, it is like paradise. So uh, we can't shortchange it. None of us. We have to live the best life that we can. Yep. We got to play your, the best card. You got to play your hand as it was dealt. Yeah. If you try to cheat it and go early, uh, you're, you you got to come back and kind of redo it again. Maybe not yep. the same body. So we can't really cheat it, but it is good news to know that we all get to see each other again. Oh, absolutely. And, and that we get to see all our, our, our relatives, our friends, all our pets. Yep. And, uh, you know, you always wonder, it's funny in Emanuel Swedenborg's books, he said, when, a husband or a wife goes before the other one because i mean the chances are one's going to go before the other yeah that's true uh, that how how will they they sometimes they have what is it it's really cute the wives always recognize the husbands but sometimes it's difficult for the husbands to recognize the wives because yeah. they look younger yeah and, and at first they're not sure because they you know the women probably do a little self-improvement a little taller whatever yeah. Sure, yep. uh, yep. but that yeah that it's really cute that because that we do look so much younger but the fact that we are met there and it's interesting because i've had people that uh have been married a long time and say you know the husband passes and so forth and they come through younger and so forth they don't look at time here like waiting for them like a big deal like it's quick over there yeah. whether it, here it seems really long sometimes absolutely it does it's, seem long. I don't know if that made sense what I just said, but the person that's over there already going, oh, I'll see you soon. It's no big deal. You know, exactly. It's, it's like, yeah, I'll, I'll see you soon. Yeah. But here it's like a really long time. It feels like a long time, but it over does. there, the time is different. Wouldn't you say time is time uh, is different? Yeah. It, it is perceived differently. It, yeah. They don't actually have time like we do. Because when I was over there, there's just, there's no sense of, okay, in an hour, it's going to be time to eat. Or, okay, in two days from now, I have to go to a conference. They, they don't think that way. It's like there's just no time, whereas we are, we are time-bound. We have our calendars that we fill up every day, or everything we have to get done. Well, right. over there, they just, they just don't have the same idea that we do about time. And also how they use time. How do you perceive they use time differently than us? I didn't even notice that they did. That was a strange thing. I didn't even notice that they had time. People just were engaged in doing what they love to do. And they have, you can go to take, like you mentioned earlier, classes and seminars and workshops and all those things. But I don't know how they know if there's, what time they're going to start. Like if you wanted to have a lecture, <laughs> on a Friday, on a Friday afternoon, I don't know how they know that. They just do. They it's they somehow telepathy. they just kind of know like boom by yeah. thought waves, right? Yeah. Yep. Wow, it'd be nice if we could do that. Oh, we all meet here, boom. That's exactly. interesting because there's no there's no like real clock or a big bin ticking somewhere. Nope. Exactly. It's, that's, that's something that's man made. So this comes up a lot. People ask me, and I would love to get your take on this. Did you see people eating talk about food? <laughs> you know what? I have been asked about that a lot too. I get asked all the time. Yeah. I want to hear what you say. What you and say I, I, I didn't have any experience with that at all. I didn't see anybody eating or drinking. In fact, that was one of the questions I had for a medium friend of mine, someone like, someone like you. Uh, it's, it was quite a few years ago. I asked that very question. I said, I know that we have bodies because I saw mm -hmm. them, but mm -hmm. they are perfect. They oh. are stronger than our bodies here on earth, mm -hmm. but they're lighter. But we definitely have form and substance in a body. Yes, yes. Well, the, well, the, the medium said, yes, we can eat, but we don't have to. 
So if you want to, if you still want to taste foods, make foods, be a chef, cook, you can still do all that. But we don't have to eat to stay alive like we do here, because our bodies are, uh, what do you call them? Um, really, they're just perfect. They're perfect bodies, ideal bodies. But that's something I wanted to know, too, because I love food. <laughs> well, I'll tell you something really funny and cute on that. I got, you know, we, it's, uh, I mean, no one's going to know for sure, but I can tell you what, what part of that I do know. I was doing a group reading, and it was at someone's house. It was this beautiful, beautiful home. And uh, there was a big crowd there that they had me come do this thing. This is a few years ago. And their relatives, to the, I mean, there was a few families there, but one of these, one of them, the relatives coming through and they're saying, hey, blah, blah, blah. You know, Aunt May made this great fried okra. <laughs> and yeah. then they would talk about fried chicken and they, really the stuff that's bad for you, this fried. The word always started with fried or chocolate yeah. cake. And they would talk about these things. And I could see the faces on the people. And it was kind of a high highfalutin home and all that. The, the, I look at the faces like, okay, we pay for this lady. Why is she here talking about fried food? Yeah. It's yeah. because they don't have that. And that's, that's, uh, that's, that's a book I have to write. There's no grease in heaven. It is, it's, yeah. it's like a, um, the things that are really bad for you here. They don't have that there. And they talk about, Oh, was that delicious? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And they have these memories because they, they can mock up food but it's not the same as here because it's a lower vibration. They don't have grease there. So they can mock up something that might taste like that. I don't really perceive it as food. We have to eat food or we'll die. Yeah. And, well, yep. some yogis might disagree with that, but on the whole, most people, if you don't drink water and eat some food, you, you're, mm -hmm. this body will perish. Yeah, there exactly. they don't have to because it's a light body. It's made out of a different substance. It's not a solid flesh like here. But right. it is a body. It's just a different. Um, it's made out of something different. So they don't, and it's not see through. It is solid. It's just not. Yeah, the same it, there's. Yeah, it's it's not transparent. It's it's solid, it's not, just like ours it's are. Solid. It's just like us, but it's not the same thing. Uh, yeah. They don't have to eat, but they do sometimes pretend they're making food and bit and getting together with the family because they'll describe the food they're they're cooking and doing. I, I, it's almost to me what it feels like, uh, you know, when little girls, when they're, when they're tiny and they play uh, with tea sets. Oh yeah. Yeah. And they're drinking, but they're not really doing anything. I almost feel like they have such an endearment toward food that they kind of mock this whole scenario up because um, they don't have to have it. Yeah, that's true. Yeah. They don't have to have it, but there's an endearment because the reason they like it so much is they don't have certain things like that here. But what comes up is the fried stuff, um, the uh, brownies, uh, mm -hmm. chocolate cakes, uh, peach yeah. cobbler. McDonald's. Uh, they do. Yeah. All the really bad stuff. Yeah. But yeah. they have a form of ice cream that's really easy to make there that they, and, oh. and sorbet. But you know what they can do? I did this with a, a woman's grandmother. I became friends with the lady and we were out and I said, uh, let's go in TBCY. And she's like, okay. Oh, yeah. So we went in there and, and, and at this point, her grandmother, I did a reading, her grandmother came through really detailed and she's come through with other family members with me. So at this point I figured the grandmother knows me and, and she goes, my grandmother loved ice cream. So I went, really? Do you know her favorite? She goes, yes, I do. I said, well, don't tell me. So I went and got <laughs> little cups of ice, you know, ice cream. You know how they give you samples? Yeah. And I put them out there. And then I, I said, I invited her to blend with me. And I said, do you want to taste? Oh, you'll let me taste ice cream through you? And I went, yes, I will. And she wow. loved ice cream. That's so fantastic. We, so what we did, I let her, uh, they can do that. They can also blend with us and feel when we're in pain, like our relatives and stuff. So yeah. I, I tasted the different ones. I said, this is her favorite. This is her second. And this is her third. What do you think? She goes, that's exactly her favorites in the order. Oh, and, that's fabulous. But she was so excited that I let her get to taste ice cream. That's um, neat. How yeah, great. She, she didn't possess me. She just blended with me enough yeah. that she could taste. Uh, they can do that. 
uh, that they can, I mean, that's just weird otherwise, but she was so thrilled because it's not quite the same thing as here. That's yeah. why people like food so much. Yeah, yep. <laughs> they do. And they'd like yeah. the memories over the food, like get togethers, holidays. The parties, and yep. Yeah, they talk about that a lot too. So I'm glad we talked about the food thing. And the children, like I said, they, they, I usually tend to see that they will grow up uh, at what rate. I don't know. Um, you don't know. It may not be the same as in here, but at some point yeah. they don't really grow up. They kind of just is their eternal spiritual being. But that's what it looks like to me. And then they'll top off at the age of everybody else. So, you know, there's the one thing I wanted to tell your audience that I get a lot and it's it's something that comes up so often that I wanted to share it with you and your audience because I know that there'll be people in your circle of of membership that would understand this and it has to do with suicides. Oh, so okay. so many people write me and ask me is their child is their son or daughter okay they have this fear that because they committed suicide that god sent them to hell and that absolutely is not true it's at all it's, it's totally exactly false. it's absolutely false mm -hmm. they are so loved when they get there because they had so much trauma they had so yes. in order to take your own yes. life you 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 suffer Yes. And I went through this just recently with my one of my cousins. About a month and a half ago, one of my cousins took her life. I'm so and sorry. And it was just absolutely tragic and so sad. But they get counseled. They put them in healing centers when they get there. Yeah. Yes. There's, and I just wanted to let your people know that God never sends anybody to hell, no. especially someone who is tormented like a suicide no absolutely and i'm so glad we're answering some of these these are famous questions that i get all the time this would be actually an awesome show just for us to do this all day long because yeah with our perspectives because it's i mean you know we just kind of blend with this and jive but um i can tell you a lot of i've i've had a lot of suicides come through now yeah that doesn't mean uh, that i knew they were you know, because I don't ask, uh, but they'll come through and they'll say, usually they're shy about it. Like, oh, I had some responsibility in my passing. I'm like, okay, it's okay. Yeah. But what I know to be true is that usually um, they will say they had really hard times coping. They were really in a bad way. Mm -hmm. They didn't know how to solve it. Exactly. And they, and they have help waiting for them. They have a special unit. <laughs> yeah, I believe that. <laughs> like a trauma unit that comes in and helps them and helps um, these people that are traumatized and they're not penalized for it because they're just, they've just had it. They're very upset. Yep. They're given um, uh, tender love and care. They're not judged in this way. Exactly. Again, earth is really hard. And yeah. you think, oh, who would do that? Hey, I mean, look in the Bible with Saul. Saul loves his whole family, his business. Can you imagine if you lost your business, your entire family and all your kids? You don't know what you would do. I'm just exactly. saying people yep. have breaking points and they don't know. We don't know. Don't ever say never. We You don't know. Uh, you don't know what your breaking point is. And, and uh, when you when you do cross over, even if you're responsible, there's a tremendous amount of love. There was a man that came through once and he was thanking this, the, this, this woman that I was talking to for taking care of him. And I said, he's like a grandfather, but not, and he wasn't, she was in uh, a funeral home business. And anyway, she got to know this guy indirectly through some people and he was um, a shut in. So mm -hmm. her family just sort of adopted him and she would visit and they set him up and helped him. And what ended up happening, what he showed me, because I really don't like talking about it. I said, it's okay. Uh, but he took his own life with a gun and he even placed his cross there. And she goes, I always want to know. I said, yeah, he, but why did he do that? He said, cause he was ashamed. He didn't want to let God down, but he didn't, yeah. but he was just lonely and he missed his wife and he was just sad. He wasn't a bad person. Mm -hmm. um, I've also had it come through when people go, Oh, they kill, you know, I have so-and-so blah, blah, blah. Oh, they killed themselves. And I was like, and I get, they didn't, I get it with uh, many times as an accident. 
they'll combine yeah. some type of pill with maybe they're drinking that came through with a young guy and he was upset because his wife was cheating and he says i didn't do it i didn't kill myself i just it just i it was an accident you know yeah. he he was i don't know combining things and he said next thing you know i'm over here and so it um sometimes they're not um suicides either sometimes yeah. they're not but you're right it's yeah. not it's met with love and compassion absolutely and they mm -hmm. get another chance and um what I, I did ask jesus about hell did they talk to you about hell they didn't mention anything about that to me well i i well i asked not back then i wasn't thinking about i was thinking about jesus yeah. over there. but i did ask him uh, a couple of years ago and i really didn't think i'd get an answer i was like jesus this is hell thing even real i mean you know and so yeah. i was like three months later and i got a really detailed answer he woke me up i was like wow that makes total sense he said that wow. people that what he told me he said that people that are sick in their minds like you know you think of serial killers really yeah. bad people in prison mm -hmm. you know just bad people he said when they're sick in their mind he said i offer them my love everybody my love and he said but because of free will sometimes they don't take it and they want to continue in spirit and it's kind of deep but in spirit, that. they want to continue to molest little kids or like you know cannibalism eat people you know and or whatever they do this really horrible he named them what they are they were pretty awful stuff okay and he yeah. said i want to continue to do this and he said so um he said so they end up going to because they refuse and he says i can't have them near my flock and i'm like yeah i really don't want to play that game he said yeah. so what they do is i keep offering my love because there's something better but they go but they they take joy out of this weird stuff he said they're sick in their minds so they go with other people that want to play these creepy games but he says he never stops trying and sending angels to get them out of the so they can grow because they're obviously yeah. sick right but yep. um, very disturbed they're disturbed but they go but they want they think it's fun <laughs> and so they go to with these other people that like to do the same things so um you know this is why look i didn't um we're not catholic didn't grow up catholic don't know much about it but i will say that um that i know that prayers they pray for us in heaven but when we pray for people that even if they've crossed over i've been told that it's helped people that they hear your prayers and they're yeah, like i've heard that too i was kind of and some of them i call it the murk which is not the lobby like you were <laughs> it's like before you get there it's not good it's not bad it's just the murk it's just sort of like yeah hmm and and i think some people make i mean i didn't know about this stuff purgatory that sounds really bad but it's a place mm -hmm. if they're really got issues like they got a bad attitude where they get canceling so they can like they can't go into heaven cussing god you know it's not a good yeah. idea and yeah. just they kind of get their head on straight and they go oh okay you know and then they're fine uh the murk but these people is kind of off to the side a little bit down and they're just uh in a bad way but god never stops offering angels and support and help yeah. and do people stay there a lot of people don't they get out of that but um but then you look in life what about um, people that are miserable and they've been in a horrible job their whole life or a horrible marriage, but they really think yeah. they can't get out, but they can get out, but they think they can't. I mean, people exactly. are like that in this yep. world. So wh what do you think about all that? What he told me? Um, it's a viewpoint is what he's basically telling. It's a viewpoint. People go where their mind is. Yeah. When I, I had a lot of things that I felt during my experience and one of them was this feeling from God that God loves us so much that he never created a hell but there are levels like you mentioned like 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 layers of a cake there are layers there are uh, what do they call them I guess they call them levels and there are there are lower levels where less developed souls that's where they want to be yeah. it, and that's that's yeah. where the idea of of hell came from i think so was the lower levels that's yeah. that's what i take yeah because they still want to carry on and, and beat women and rape and carry on and they're like yeah. they think it's 
entertaining or something. And so there, there's levels for that. Again, it's free will. I and you know what happens to them? That. They, um, they do still have life reviews. Those, those people Ooh. do. And a friend of mine told me, he said that they have to have a life review. And if they don't learn from having that life review, they may have to come back into another life and have what they had, what they did to someone else. They'll, they'll have to have the experience put onto them so they can learn. Right. It's you know, all about learning. You know, it reminds me of that movie. Remember the movie Switch? Oh, yeah. Yeah. Barkin and and uh, who was the other guy who was? Um, I don't remember his Jimmy, name. What, I can't think of it. Was Smith. He's a really good actor. And she came back and she was always treating women like, you know, a piece of meat or dirt. Or he was. He was a man. Yeah. And so it was so funny. God. Uh, really turned it around. He had to come back, but as a female. And oh he, yes. And he and yeah, and it was really cute. And uh, it was Ellen Barkin, and got hit on by every dirt bag you could imagine to feel what yeah. he did. It was actually a cute little. It was a cute little movie. Yeah, I like so, it too. Yeah, and yeah, I like that movie. But but it is true. Uh, it's funny. I always say people that hate, 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 and they have so much hate. And if they hate, you know, a certain kind of let's say race, which is ridiculous. <laughs> but if they did, guess who they're going to come back next time as exactly. that race <laughs> yep. or exactly. that from that country or from that, whatever it is, you know, that's, that's what they're going to come back. Yep. That's what they're going to come back to. <laughs> exactly. It's God's little way of saying, well, you didn't really learn, did you, about the whole love thing? Yeah. So, wow. We've covered a lot. Is there any other questions that people have asked you Um those we covered a lot of good ones you know the not really the the biggest one was the suicides yeah i would get so many of those and people that lost their children and the two most common ways it seems like they lose their children to cancer or they lose them to an automobile accident yes. a car accident of some kind and i have a friend who lost her daughter when her daughter was 21 years old, she was hit by a drunk driver. And she said that nothing has ever compared to the kind of pain that she felt when her daughter was killed. She said she would gladly take the biblical idea of hell over having the loss of a child, what that feels like. It's just horrible. And that's right. people just want to know that they're they're safe, that they're on the other side, that they're going to be there when they cross over, that they'll all yeah. be together again, that there's so much so much hope. Absolutely. And they are. But, you know, what? think about it when you love somebody so much. Right. So mm -hmm. much love pouring out like for a child, so much love. And then you have no place to send that love, but you really do. There's they're, they're receiving it on the other side. Yeah. It, but all of a sudden that love feels abruptly cut off and there's so much of a big flow of it. Um, I think that's also a big part too. Like, what do I do with all this love? So many times when people lose someone, they dearly, dearly love and they want so badly to talk to them. Mm -hmm. Guess what oh, yeah. happens? Guess what happens? <laughs> They get to, they come through. They do. They do. Yeah. And they turn into mediums. I'm not kidding. They want wow. so badly to talk, talk to them. I wanted to talk to my grandparents for so long and I do all the time, but it, but I like, I think it was Suzanne G Giesman that lost uh, a child and wanted so badly to talk to them. Now she's a professional medium, but this is not oh, yeah. common because they want to have that, that love and that communication to continue, uh, continue on. And where they got it, that it was bad in the Bible and all that. I don't know. Yeah, it's, I don't either. It's not even in the Bible. I, I don't. Well, they say mediums are bad. Well, they changed that in the 1971, 73 yeah. that time. But yeah. about talking to the dead. First of all, they're not dead. They're more alive than we are. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I agree. They're very happy, you know, when they come through, they're like, hey, you know, they're just so light. Yeah. Um, and the other thing is that's who we are. We're spirit. That's our true state. Yep, that is. That's our true, our true state, our real home. Right. The so camera, I, my laptop battery is about to well, die. Oh, my goodness. Well, we'll end off. 
John, thank you so much for today and answering also the questions. You are such a delight. This, and I, was, this was just a pleasure for me. <laughs> I love talking to you. Oh, I love talking to you too. I think that uh, you are helping people more than you even know and that you've been so genuine and so real. I love that you're a real person and you're not uh, hung up on yourself or anything. You know, right. you are just a right. real person. And I love how uh, you're just really with people trying to uh, answer the questions and be there. And I just thank you so much from the bottom of my heart. Uh, you well, thank you for having me on your show. I absolutely loved it. Oh, uh, God bless you and everything that you continue to do. Thank you so much. Thank you, Tamara. Talk to you soon. Okay. Take care. All right.